Hello, welcome to the migration to Amazon EMR series. My name is Bruno Faria, and I'm a senior big data solutions architect at AWS. In this session, I'm going to talk to you about securing resources on Amazon EMR. Now, this session is going to be very helpful for Hadoop administrators, analytic leaders, and infrastructure managers that are looking into ways to tighten their security or to adjust the different options that they can have to further enhance their security mechanism for big data applications. Now, when it comes to security, there are a few different requirements that customers or applications will need to meet. Now, take, for example, a security engineer that's responsible of securing an Amazon EMR cluster or just securing a big data application in general. There's going to be a few different security areas that the applications will need to be solving for. The first one is authentication, and that is the process to prove that a user is who they say they are. We also have applications that will implement authorization, and these are the controls for what a particular resource a user can access. And we also talk about data protection, and this is the process of encrypting your data at rest as well as in transit. And lastly, we also have the network security. And these are the controls for inbound and outbound access to your cluster resources. So now let's talk a little bit into more detail into those specific areas and see what are the applications and options that our customers are using today. So the first one that I'd like to talk about is authentication. Now when it comes to authentication, different applications will have different features. Take for example, if you're looking to implement LDAP authentication, Applications like Hive Server, your Presto Coordinator, Hue, and Zeppelin all offer the ability to do that. So by using LDAP authentication, you can integrate with Active Directory, and your Active Directory users could log in directly to those web UIs and have access to those resources. Now, another way that customers can configure authentication to their EMR clusters includes using the EC2 key pair, or SSH login to your cluster. And by logging into your cluster via SSH, users will have the ability to use the EC2 key pair that they use when the cluster was created. And this allows them to log in directly to the cluster and submit jobs and run their applications directly from the command line. Now, another option for authentication comes down to AWS credentials, or IAM. Now, one of the options for this is to restrict authentication or allow authentication through the means of submitting a job through the EMR step API. Now, when talking about authentication, one of the main authentication mechanisms is through Kerberos. Kerberos is a very common used option and method to authenticate applications. Now let's talk, walk a little bit through the workflow of using Kerberos with EMR. Now when users are looking to enable Kerberos for their applications, what Kerberos is going to be doing is making sure that the applications have tickets and they are assigned tickets from a central key distribution center called the KDC. And by retrieving those tickets, user will be able to validate their identities and prove that they are who they say they are. Now with the ability, with using Kerberos, users also have the ability to integrate their clusters with Microsoft Active Directory. And this is just an example that we have here where you can launch your KDC server directly running on the master node or you also have the option to use external KDC servers. Now, all of this ends up with the same takeaway is that users can use Kerberos in order to authenticate themselves or even authenticate the applications that are running between the cluster. So now let's talk about how can you enable Kerberos on Amazon EMR? And that's actually very simple. With a simple click, uh, with a few clicks, you are able to launch a cluster that's fully Kerberized. And here you can see on the screenshot of the AWS console, where you have the ability to, with a few clicks, create a security configuration that will enable Kerberos for your Amazon EMR cluster. And on top of that, you also have the ability to specify a cross-realm trust, which this allows that cluster to be integrated with other LDAP solutions or identity solutions, such as Microsoft Active Directory. Now, there are some other important parts here on the, this console that I'll be talking about later on, which includes the lake formation piece. Now, this is a good segue to talk about authorization and the different features and options that you have when implementing authorizations for your big data applications. The first one is Hive Server and Presto. These are applications that you can use in order to run SQL queries. 
and it also allows you to control access to tables and databases using what we call SQL-based authorization. You also have the option to control access to the cluster using IAM policies. And by doing this, you can specify tags for an EMR cluster and specify which IAM users can submit a particular job to that cluster using the EMR step API. Now, the other application that's worth mentioning here is Apache Ranger, which is an application that you can use to control access to different big data resources, including your Hive server, as well as HDFS. So take, for example, if you like to restrict what a user can access as far as a database or a table goes, Ranger can be used for that. Now, the other way that you can restrict access based on IAM is by specifying roles, bucket policies, and the VPC endpoint policies. To talk a little bit more about that, when you're launching an EMR cluster, there's going to be two important roles. One of them is the EMR service role, which is used to control what the EMR service can access or do within your account. For example, spinning up EC2 instances. The other role that's very important to consider here is the EMR EC2 role, which is used to limit what resources your EMR cluster can get to, including different buckets, Kinesis streams, DynamoDB tables, and so on. Now you can also limit access to different buckets by using bucket policies, as well as VPC endpoint policies, which later on we'll show this and talk a little bit more about this. But the last authorization application that I'd like to talk about is AWS Lake Formation, which is one of our services that can be used in order for you to easily build an entire data lake. Now with Lake Formation, you have the ability to control what, you, what resources a particular user will be able to get to at a catalog level. This means that you can specify which tables, which databases, and you can even limit access granular as columns. And you can specify which columns a user will be able to access. So now let's talk about another feature or another option that you can use in order to limit who can access what with your EMR clusters. And that's the separation of EMR clusters based on permissions. For example, you can assign an EMR cluster to your data scientist, and this particular cluster would only have access to some buckets. At the same time, you can have a cluster dedicated for another team, which will have permissions to access different S3 buckets. And by using this mechanism, you can dedicate clusters to different teams that will have different permissions to access data or resources within your account. Now, to change segues a little bit, the next topic that I would like to talk about is data protection. Now, when it comes to data protection, there are also various options, similar to authentication and authorization mechanisms. Now, data protection is the mechanism which you are protecting your data. This includes encryption at rest, as well as in-transit encryption. Now, with EMR, you also have the ability to use different encryption mechanisms or options. For example, this is a screenshot of the console where with a few clicks, I can encrypt various different options or use various different options to encrypt my data. For example, I can use S3 encryption to encrypt data at rest at S3, and I can also use client-side or server-side S3 encryption. If you're looking to protect your data that's stored locally in the cluster, you can also look into encrypt your local volumes, including EBS root volumes, as well as other EBS volumes that you have. And this will allow you to protect data that's being stored locally on those clusters. Now, by default, whenever you're communicating with EMRFS or with EMR to S3, your in-transit communication or that data is going to be encrypted. Now, if you're also looking to encrypt the data communication between cluster nodes, you also do have the option with a simple click of a button, you can configure EMR to also encrypt communication between the components. For example, HDFS block encryption. So this takes us to the last security area that I would like to discuss, which is controlling network traffic to EMR clusters. Now with EMR, we do have a feature which you can use to block clusters from having public access. And this is actually a very simple process. To block clusters from having public access, simply go to the AWS EMR console, and from there, you can select the checkbox to specify what is allowed to access the cluster. And then on step number two, you should launch a cluster that's on the private subnet only. 
Now the takeaway here is that EMR fully support private only clusters. So you are able to launch clusters with only private internet access. And that means that you also should create endpoints to specify different resources or services that EMR can get to via the private network. For example, you can create endpoints to access S3, KMS, and DynamoDB. And the last step is if you would like to access the EMR master node or access that cluster directly, you can create a jump host or use a NAT instance with public access in order to give access reach to those EMR cluster nodes. Now this takes a little bit through the different control mechanisms that you have to control access to the network of your EMR cluster. This concludes the session on securing Amazon EMR resources. I hope you enjoy it. For additional resources on migration guidance, please consult aws.amazon.com slash EMR slash EMR migration. My name is Bruno Faria and I hope that you enjoyed the session.